Philip Simpson. I'm the Director of Student Affairs for the School of Nursing. I work closely with Britt with advising and helping students get registered for the proper classes. Actually, you, for the most part, will register on your own this go around coming up. But um, we, we also do a lot of work with the admissions piece. So when you get ready to apply to the program, we help guide you through that process. And then once you're admitted to the nursing program, we get to bother you about immunizations and all these other clinical clearance items. So anyway, so that's kind of the fun stuff I get to do. All right, I'm Britt Flanagan and I'm an advisor in the School of Nursing. Um, I advise some of you, um, when you actually come into UNCG and you're interested in nursing as a new first time freshman, we have about 400, we have over 400 students probably that start every fall semester. So in order to advise students well, we work with the health and human sciences department. And so some of you are assigned to me and some of you are assigned to the health and human sciences department. Everybody actually comes in as a pre-health studies major. And so in the past, we've had a pre-nursing major and we no longer do have a pre-nursing major. So when you go into your degree works and you look up and see that your major is pre-health studies, that is correct. All of you will be pre-health studies until you apply to the nursing program which we'll talk about the application during this session also. And once you are admitted to the program, we then change you in the system to a nursing major. So if you are looking at your degree works and you see that it's pre-health studies, well, that is correct, okay? So we think the main areas that are going to be important for you guys to know in planning for the spring semester are definitely gonna be related to what you need in order to apply to the nursing program. So the timeline is important that you are taking the correct courses so that you can apply on time. Um, the exact courses that you take are important. Those include nurse prerequisites to be eligible to apply to the nursing program but they also include general education requirements, okay? So what I'm going to do is show you first how to um, get to the School of Nursing website and find some of this information directly on our website so that if you haven't had access to it in the past, you will know where to go. So in doing that, You'll just search School of Nursing. All right, Britt, I don't know. I'm seeing a clock and a calendar. Hmm? Well, maybe, I don't know. Austin, what do you see? I've got a black screen with a blue line going down the middle. Huh. Oh yeah, black screen, blue line. I wonder why that is. I'm not sure. Try try um, clicking on one of the other, maybe a, a new tab. There we go. Got it now. Ah, that's it. That looks good. Okay. All right. Just learned some new technology with screen share. Okay. So now we're on the School of Nursing website. A lot of information here because we have a lot of programs at the undergraduate level, the graduate level. Um, so to find what you're looking for, you'll go to academics and undergraduate. And the program that you are um, interested in is the BSM pre-licensure program. And here you can find information about the criteria to um, pursue nursing as your major, 
the general education core requirements, the nursing prerequisites, and all of that. In addition, you'll find under admissions, the undergraduate admissions information, which is right here. So that application for the upper division. Okay, so I would just suggest going through here a little bit so that you familiarize yourself with our website. I'm not going to go in details right now, but um, there is some valuable information on there that we're going to go over. Do you see this, the PowerPoint? Yes. yes. Okay. Just yeah. Sure. Okay. And we will be, I just want to make a note to anybody tagging along and watching this, we will be adding the updated uh, information sheet for 2020, 2021. I think the one that's out there is still 2019, 2020. So yeah. um, on our website, that'll be updated shortly. Okay. But nothing's really changed. So it's the same information, essentially. Right. So when you are planning, do you see the info sheet now? Um, no. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. There we go. I have to click new share, I guess, is what it is. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's over here now. You got it. It's on there. Yeah. Okay. So I've got two monitors going. All right. So this is everything you need to know about the nursing program. So on the PowerPoint where we showed you about nursing prerequisites and general education requirements, the four-year sample plan, all of that is on here. I think that most importantly, in planning for your next semester for the spring is to go over the four-year sample plan. So some of you are tracking where you took two science courses this semester. You're taking Bio 111, plus the lab, the Chem 103, and the Chem 110 lab, then possibly sociology or anthropology. Some of you are taking psychology, and you've got English 101, and some of you are taking a freshman seminar. If you are not taking two sciences, you may be following this sample four-year plan. If you have not seen this sample for your plan, then feel free to contact Philip or myself so that I can make sure that you know exactly where this is because it is important to follow. For those of you who are just taking one science course this semester, you will want to pick up that first chemistry in the spring. So it's important, like I said before, that you are taking the courses you need in order to apply to the nursing major. As new first time freshmen starting in the fall semester, these first three semesters are what you are, you know, is what you're focusing on because you're going to apply to the upper division this spring semester. So your timeline for applying to the nursing major is Feb by February 1st of 2022. So if you are taking two science courses this semester, then you're gonna be looking at either anatomy or physiology. You can take either one in the spring. You'll be taking either your first chemistry or you'll be taking your second chemistry, which is Chem 104. All of these courses are required, okay? Then um, you may take either psychology or sociology, like I mentioned before. Everybody is required to take English 101. Um, you have other requirements like a speaking intensive marker, writing intensive marker, which are general education requirements. But all of these courses that are specified, like the anatomy, the chemistry two, psychology, 
sociology, this human physiology, introductory nutrition, human development, so this lifespan development, microbiology, statistics, ethics, this philosophy 121 or 220, those are all required for the nursing program. So those are these nursing cognate courses. And they all apply to the nursing profession. So in the nursing profession, you need to know the parts of the body. So that's anatomy. Then you're going to learn how the systems work, which is physiology. Microbiology, you will learn about um, viruses <laughs> like COVID, um, bacteria, um, the immune system. In chemistry too, you're going to be learning micro, uh, you're going to be learning biochemistry and organic chemistry. So those are like those science courses that are important in applying to the program. Nursing is a holistic profession. So you will be working with all ages and this lifespan development course teaches you about um, the development of individuals from birth to death. So it actually says that in the course description. Psychology, you're learning more about how the brain works. Um, sociology or anthropology, you can take either or of these courses to meet this requirement. You are learning about other cultures. Nutrition, this is actually another science course. So you are learning about how food metabolizes when it comes into your body. So what happens in the cells? So it's not about eating the right vegetables and fruits every day. This philosophy 121 or 220 requirement is ethics. So you'll run into a lot of ethical issues and um, moral issues that, may, that your patient may be going through personally um, or they, um, one of the courses philosophy 220, for example, is medical ethics. And you'll discuss topics like medicine and religion. So you may have a 10 year old child and the doctor is saying you need to have um, this type of treatment, but the family based on their religion does not agree. So you wanna talk about ethical issues like that before you come into that situation. Statistics, you need to know how to collect data, analyze data, report on data, you will take a research course when you're in the nursing um, program. So I like to go over all of these so that you're really clear on the fact that these courses are required for the program, okay? You have to take these courses or you will not be eligible to apply. Um, you'll see on the sample four-year plan that some of these the spring semester when you apply right here are in progress and that is fine. You can have some in progress. You don't wanna to have too many though because you wanna have most of them completed before you submit that application, okay? Um, Philip, do you wanna talk some about the competitiveness of the nursing program? Yeah, this is the part, uh, we try not to scare too many people away by going over this, but it's, you know, you guys want to know what the lay of the land is going into this. Um, it's extremely important that you put together, piece together, um, you know, three solid semesters of coursework with great grades, as great grades as you can get. Um, the committee looks very closely when you're applying at these main sciences. So don't get too cute with your sciences and try to take three or four at the same time. It's just not advisable. If you spread them out, um, no more than two per semester. That's how it usually works. You should be able to handle these. Uh, the committee's looking for as many A's and B's in those types of science courses as possible. The GPA range, um, we recommend, I mean, you have to have at least a 3.0 to apply to the program, but we encourage students to aim for a 3.6 or higher by the time they apply. Um, Generally speaking, we admit 100 students each year. 
the average GPA range has been somewhere in the 3.7 range to 3.8 range for the 100. But the range of GPAs in any given year runs typically from 3.4 to 4.0. So they're looking at your science grades, they're looking at your overall GPA, and they're looking at uh, the score from the T's exam. And you don't really need to worry about the T's right now. That will come your sophomore year, uh, late at the latter part of um, your fall semester. So we'll we'll learn we'll talk more about that at another time. Um, but uh, we have several questions rolling in, and I, I mentioned to everybody in the chat that we'll get to them at the very end, Britt. So we probably want to give them about five or six more minutes of information before we answer questions. Okay. So one important um, piece of information that is very valuable to you as you are new first time freshman. Did you, you didn't just go over this, right? I did not. And okay. I don't know if you can make your screen a little bit bigger or that image bigger. Okay. See if you can, there we go, a little bit more. Yeah, that's pretty good. Is that good? Unless so, they're on their little small phone, but yeah, that should be good. Okay. <laughs> So when you are, um, when you enter UNCG as a new first time freshman interested in nursing, priority admissions is your door, is your, um, that is, what am I trying to say? Their that golden is, ticket, their golden yes, ticket. Your golden ticket, sorry. Golden. And um, so if you meet this criteria, then you are guaranteed a seat in the nursing program. So it says subject to space availability, but we've never had, so each year we accept around 100 students. We have one application process a year. And we've never had 100 priority admission students. Typically we'll have around 35 to 40. So when you look at this and it says earn and maintain a cumulative GPA of 3.5 by the end of the third semester. So for your timeline by the end of fall 2021, that's where you wanna have a cumulative GPA of at least a 3.5 or above. So I tell my students shoot for a 3.6, 3.7 because if you fall short, you'll still be competitive. Right, if you shoot for that three five, you don't wanna get lower than that. This is the minimum. In the science courses, the chemistry two, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, you want A's and B's in these courses. Nutrition, statistics, and ethics. Those are also courses that by the end of the third semester, if you've taken any of these, you need at least a B or better. The other courses are still required, but some may be in progress. So on that four-year sample plan, we have microbiology that spring, that spring. So a lot of you might be in microbiology together when you get the news of whether you've been admitted to the nursing program or not, okay? Um, we do have a standardized test called the T's which you don't need to worry about now. So one rule of thumb that Philip and I really try to stress to students is focus on the courses you're taking this semester and plan for your next semester, okay? So you take one semester at a time, but look a little bit into the future to make sure that you're tracking the major the, correctly, that you're taking the courses that you definitely need. Um, a goal that most nursing students have is to meet all of the general education requirements before they start the nursing program too. So they want to get their fine arts and their literature and their history completed. They don't want to have to take any of those courses because once you get in the nursing program, you've worked really hard on those science courses. You've worked hard to be where you are and you want to just focus on nursing. So all of that information is all of those courses and all of those requirements are in that four-year sample plan. So if you're following that and you understand what your fine arts is, what a global marker is, what a writing intensive marker is, then you're going to get everything completed. If you don't understand what those are, 
and I sound like I'm talking in a foreign language, then ask your advisor, make a note right now and say, you know, advisor, what is a global marker? What is a writing intensive marker? Those are things that you do need to know because they're required in order for you to be able to graduate. So do we wanna go ahead and answer some questions, Philip? Yeah, um, before I get into that, I want to show them the um, walkthrough on degree works real quick, just yes. briefly. So I'm gonna to try to share my screen now and see if that works. Um, what did I do with that? Wow. Well, maybe I won't. Huh. Oh, there it is. I found it. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, this is a fake student named undergraduate student diagnostic or something like that. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with this process, if you, since you're listed as uh, pre-health studies assigned to HHS as your major, you'll want to go over in degree works and go to this what if area here and click on what if and it's going to allow you to pick your catalog year so always pick the most recent 2020 2021 and you're going to want to pick the drop down box here and pick the first nursing one BSN nursing and it'll automatically populate over here that your major is nursing so once you have these items picked just select the process what if button and then that'll give you a glimpse at your progress towards the courses that are required for the nursing program. So you have to kind of scroll towards the bottom of the page. And as you can see, anatomy's here and the lab, physiology and lab, microbiology and lab, <laughs> chemistry two, which is chemistry 104. And in order to get into chemistry 104, you have to take chemistry 103. Um, for your biology courses here, in order to get into anatomy, physiology, or micro, you have to complete Bio 111 first. But you can see the other prerequisite courses that are listed out that Britt just went over. So this is a great way for you to get used to tracking your progress on um, you know, meeting all those requirements. And all right, Britt, I took away the screen share, so. That's okay. You get full, and so I'll jump right into the questions and we'll just kind of play tag team here. Um, so one of the questions was, what classes would you recommend that we take so we can apply to the nursing program on time for our second year of college? Um, so that's kind of what we went over already and I, you prob that probably answered the question, but if not, it's extremely important that you track down that sample four-year plan so as Britt mentioned earlier, if you don't have that, reach out to one of us and, and we can make sure you have that. Uh, the key is to build around with at least two sciences each semester. All right, uh, if we are assigned to health and human sciences department and planning an advising appointment, do we plan it directly with the HHS department? Uh, yes, I mean, when you look up who your advisor is, it yep. will show you, yes. So I've got information about that. Oh, good. I'll tell you specifically, the, the Health and Human Sciences Advising Center, um, if you go onto their website, so you can um, search Health and Human Sciences Advising Center. And if you wanted to go ahead and schedule an appointment like that where you just have questions, you can go ahead and schedule one. There's a blue section on the website that, um, is about midway down the page and you can sign up for an appointment. Now for advising, which specific, which begins October 14th, so we call it peak advising. So each semester you're going to meet with your advisor for peak advising and um, Health and Human Sciences is doing it three different ways. They're doing advising appointments via email they're doing virtual advising appointments, so either through Zoom or Google Meet. And they're doing, um, they all are also going to be advertising some group virtual sessions. So Jennifer Clark will be sending out advertising to all advisees next week. So if you go in and you see you haven't been assigned to an advisor, um, if you're under me, you've already been assigned to me. But if you see, if you don't see Health and Human Sciences Advising Center, 
make sure that you get in touch with myself or the Health and Human Sciences Advising Center to let them know that you still don't have an advisor, okay? Okay. All right. Um, someone asked if we want to study abroad, when would that uh, be best? I mean, you want to get with your advisor as soon as possible to map that out. Uh, typically, we recommend students either go in the fall semester, but what you, or spring semester. Spring semester. spring semester usually works best yeah. because you want to get those main sciences out of the way, and and that may result in you taking a science course over the summer coming up in order to free up that spring semester. But yes, work with your advisor on that. Uh, next question, if I was to pursue nursing as my major and minor in something else, what would you recommend for me to do? Uh, we always say whatever interests you, but you know, the priority is to take those nursing requirements, those prerequisites for nursing and try not to get um, too bogged down in other courses that'll take away from you doing exceptionally well in your prerequisites for nursing. But if you are able to squeeze in a minor, there are several out there. Um, you know, there you can go to the UNCG's website to look up the different minors. Typically, students will go into nutrition or human development. Uh, what are some of the other minors? Psychology. It depends. Not required. Again, it's not required. But if you're interested and plan it out, you can usually squeeze those in. Yeah, and just know that when you're squeezing those in, you are squeezing those into the four year sample plan. So if you have not brought credits in, then more than likely you will not be able to minor. Okay. Yeah. Because your schedule is full. So unless you plan on taking a bunch of summer courses, um, but we find that students, if they minor, they want to be um, done with their minor before they start the nursing program. You will not have time to take any other face to face courses when you're in the nursing program yeah. because the schedule is all over the place. You wouldn't be able to meet to do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 o'clock class when you're taking your nursing classes and clinicals and those types of things. There was a question about when to take the TEAS test. We don't really recommend you take it until your sophomore year. So, towards that fall semester of your sophomore year towards maybe even the end, depends, but uh, don't worry about till sophomore year. Uh, if you wanna start studying for it, we recommend uh, next summer would be a great time to start really pouring into the, um, and we'll send out more information on it, but try to put it off till after your freshman year is over to, to even begin preparing for it. Uh, if, uh, let's see, if I needed a minor, when's a good time to apply for one? We don't, you don't need one, but, um, you'd have to start on a minor, as Britt just mentioned, sooner than later, because it's going to be hard to wrap up. Uh, we need to have a plan B when we come to the group meeting layer this month. How should we go about deciding our plan B? Britt, you want to briefly answer that one? So there's two types of plan Bs. There is your plan A and plan B based on the courses you're registering for for the spring. So um, if every student is trying to get into anatomy in the spring, you're not all going to get into anatomy. There's a limit to the number of seats. So you need to have, so in regards to registration for spring plan A and B, that is just based on you have a plan for taking anatomy in the spring, but you also have a plan for taking physiology because it's very important that you have one or the other of those courses. You need to be tracking those sciences correctly. Now, oh, oh, go ahead, plan B, as in a backup plan, that will be something we'll discuss in the spring. So I don't necessarily talk to students about a backup plan until we see kind of where things are after your first semester. You know, if you have a GPA of a 3.8, you know, this first semester, then we will start talking about a backup plan in the spring. But if you have a GPA of a 2.5 this semester, we need to start talking about it like in December, you know, over winter break. You know, do you need to change your schedule for the spring semester? That kind of thing. So there's just, if that answers your question, hopefully. All right, I'm gonna fly through these because I know we're wrapping up uh, quickly. Um, someone asked about, they already had English 101 credit from high school, what do I take? Uh, look at the sample four-year plan, mark through your English 101, it's out of the way now. 
uh, you can easily, that opens up your schedule just a little bit. Um, so again, if you look through the sample four-year plan, you'll find you're still gonna be plenty busy, uh, even with that English 101 credit, but uh, you don't have to worry about taking English composition. Uh, another question was, um, you know, how to prepare for the T's. Yes, there's study guides out there. Uh, if you go and do a search, um, even on Amazon, you'll see some great study books. Again, don't worry about those right now. Um, and tracking your GPA as you go. Yes, the uh, degree works is a great way to do that. Um, it, right now, you should be sitting at a zero GPA. Um, you'll have your GPA once the fall grades are in. Uh, someone asked about taking Chem 103 and 110 before Chem 104 as a sub for Chem 104. It is actually a prerequisite, and I spelled that out, I think, somewhere in here. It is a prerequisite for Chem 104, so you have to... Okay, to, you have to take Chem 103 before Chem 104. I tried to decline my call, it wouldn't. And there's only one chemistry lab, so you can take Chem 110 either with Chem 103 or with Chem 104. Yeah. Uh, no real difference in the study plans from the one that's on the website to the one that Britt's using, except uh, maybe HDF has been shifted to a different semester, the HDF 211. Um, we'll post the new one in the, in the next couple of days, uh, but it wouldn't hurt for you to go look at the one that's out there now and, and start making your plans. Um, let's yeah, see. When you're looking at the four-year sample plan, you want to think about the spring semester as a freshman. If you can find some courses in that sample plan that are smaller in size, where you can engage with the professor and some other students, particularly if you're living on campus, mm -hmm. then we would recommend those. So like the introduction to communication studies is a really good option for the spring semester. Yeah, and again, tracking your GPA, just keep checking once grades come in, you'll be able to track that in your UNC Genie account and you can also track it on DegreeWorks. Um, the new nursing building doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna have more nursing seats available. Uh, we are in the process of adding an accelerator program. It has not been 100% approved. If we are able to add an accelerator program, some students who apply to our traditional program may choose the accelerator program. So it could free up some space there, but we're still only gonna be able to admit 100 students to the traditional program. But the building's gonna look really good. And we're gonna have awesome simulation labs. You guys are really in luck. I mean, that building has been long overdue. So we can't stress how excited we are about it. Um, let's see, the last one, um, and well, Let's see, the T's, yes. Again, to remind you about the T's, you wanna take that uh, later in your sophomore year, your first semester of your sophomore year towards the end, most likely um, you know, October, November, December is a good time period to consider it. Uh, we'll talk, uh, we can talk more about that uh, in the springtime so you can reach out to us. And then uh, as far as taking Chemistry 103 with the Chemistry 110 lab, you do not have to take those together, but they do match up very well together. Um, you can take Chem 110 with the Chem 104 class if you like. We've even seen some students take Chemistry 110 as a standalone. Um, but we, we think the concepts that are taught are you, better to apply them with the lab while you're taking Chemistry 103. Uh, so if at all possible, try to take Chem 103 and Chem 110 together. Not required, but we, we, we seem to see students do better when they're able to apply what they're learning in the classroom in the lab setting. Okay. So here's our contact information. Um, Philip Simpson, there's his phone number. The best way to um, get in touch with us is through email, especially since we're working remotely some. So Britt Flanagan, Philip Simpson, if you wanna write those down, if you have any follow-up questions from today. Absolutely. So, you know, uh, in past we would tell freshmen, hey, uh, swing by the building when you get out of your uh, biology class. If you have any questions, stop by and see us. Well, right now we're not really doing that, uh, but feel free to reach out to us anytime. Even if you're not assigned to us, we, if you're tracking nursing, um, it, there's no problem with doing a, a, a follow up with us and saying, hey, I just wanna make sure um, because we want you to be on track and 
and it's better to hear it straight from us um, if you if you are in doubt about something. So don't just leave it to chance. Um, that contact information is there for a reason, and we hope you got something out of this session. Um, I know you did because <laughs> yeah, this and is you, this is good. And if you want to um, do Zoom appointments with us at one point, um, we'd be happy to do those. The only time that it is. Um, that we're not really available to do that is during peak advising because we're required to meet with the students that we're assigned to. And we're trying to get that done in a three to four week period. So um, again, you can still send an email and we will respond to that. But if you'd like to do a Zoom later, yeah. feel free to contact me or Philip. And we yeah, will. and what you'll see on this uh, page that Britt has posted here um, as we wrap up some of this peak advising period, I will probably put some more 20-minute um, slots out there for Zoom advising, and some of you have taken advantage of that, um, but we're really getting ready to go knee-deep into advising our current students, so I would say towards the, uh, maybe towards the end of the first week of November, I'll be putting more of those open kind of walk-in appointments out there. Um, so, you know, come back to that page on our website and, uh, if not just email us and we'll, we'll fit you in, um, at that time. Cool. Are All we right. done? I think we're done. Yep. All right, guys, we appreciate you joining us and, um, good luck with your schoolwork and keep, keep working hard. And Austin, are you going to close this out for us or do we, we do it from here? Yep, I'll, uh, I'll end the meeting and then we're gonna make sure there's a recording available on our website by the end of day Friday. So if you miss anything, wanna review information, you can visit a uh, website that I put in the chat uh, to go back and look at it. Perfect, awesome. All, All right. right, thank Thanks you. Thanks so much, y'all have a nice evening.